Welcome back to another video. Today we're breaking down a project that I did for Nike Swim. I'm gonna take you through how we achieve these shots, the crew that's involved, and then we're gonna dive deep into the edit because this is where the magic happens. We got sound design coming into play. We got color grading. We have shot selection, and all of this together is what's gonna make the magic happen. First, let's check out the spot. Let's go. The brief for this was to show off the shorts in a fun, creative way. So we had a lot of freedom of what we could come up with, but many of their shoots were taking place at the beach and we're like, what if we did pool basketball? Kind of ties together the Nike brand, Nike basketball, huge in basketball, Nike swim. This is a new thing that they're coming out with and kind of try to marry the two together. We had some awesome talent, but you don't have a ton of time to make this story make sense. So our original idea, we're like, okay, let's get them together. They're gonna be playing this intense game of basketball and then someone's gonna smack the ball and it's gonna go over a head. Edge, and that's kind of gonna like halt the game. They're gonna kind of whip back in and boom, the spot's gonna end. Some stuff didn't work out. The pool was supposed to be heated and it actually ended up being really cold when we got there. Even though the heater was turned on for some reason, it wasn't getting hot. So our talent were like shaking and we only could have them in the pool for certain periods of time. Then they'd have to get out and have to pop back in. The most important thing when you're preparing for a shoot like this with this caliber of a brand is the pre-production. This is where you actually sell your idea, right? I think it's super important, something that a lot of creatives think that they don't have to do. They're like, oh, I'll just show up with my camera and I'll figure it out and I'll make something. I promise you it's not how it's done. And I used to do that, I used to do that. I used to show up, I'd bring my camera, I'd film a bunch of B-roll and I'd figure it out in the edit. And when you stop doing that and you actually pre-plan your shots, you're able to get so much better stuff. And what's beautiful is when you're very planned out and you have a dedicated team that's helping with this stuff, you got a producer keeping you on time, you're able to have these magical moments where I'm able to capture things with a minute or five minutes of time and it ends up making the spot. And you just your creativity kind of flows in the day up. You bounce an idea off of somebody and you're able to kind of pull something that otherwise might not have made it into the spot. We're using a few amazing important pieces of equipment. We have two cameras that I'm using. We got the Canon C70, we got the ZV-E1. Now the ZV-E1 has a 16 to 28 f2.8 lens on it. It's super nimble, it's small, I can bring it in tiny places, I can shove it in people's faces and they're not like weirded out by it because it's so small. Uh, the glass with the C70 I was using the 24 to 105, the 15 to 35 and the 9 mil Lawa lens. I love using these two cameras. I'm not married to one system. When it gets super dark I might want to switch to Sony or if I'm looking for a specific long lens I might use the C70. How could I forget? One of the most important pieces of equipment is a $20 fish tank that I got at Petco. Now I went into Petco because I knew I was going to put the camera underwater, wasn't going to put it submerged, and the fish tank ended up working flawlessly. Not for this specific day because something crazy happened. We got to the shoot, we had hired this crazy underwater team to help us out, and Muzzer is down underwater getting some insane shots. And I'll, I'll flash a few more of these that are done from underwater. There's underwater flashes, it was insane. But he gets under there, stirs up the pool. We had no idea the pool was dirty, and I guess it hadn't been cleaned, and so it looked when we first got there perfectly clear, crystal clear, but once people got in there and they're moving around, it like kicked up dust and it actually turned murky. So none of my underwater stuff actually worked, and I'll show you a BT, or I'll actually show you when I brought the camera underwater what it looked like. It was completely unusable. It looked like we were like 100 feet down and it was sand everywhere. It was insane. So none of the underwater stuff worked, which is super unfortunate because I had that in the treatment. And so then I had to you know, let my Nike swim people know. I'm like, hey, this happened. I'm really sorry. Um, if we need pickup shots, I'll go pick them up. The spot also changed a little bit from my original idea. So originally I had this ball starting the spot and I, I think this is how it still should start. But because we weren't able to get the underwater stuff, they were like, hey, we need to see a little bit more product. Totally understandable, I get it. We're here to help them sell their shorts, show off the new short. So we actually ended up doing a pickup day at my mom's house, because she has a pool. And I just tried to match the colors of these blues together. And you can see these, the blues are so different. Look at that. That's what the blue of my mom's pool looked like. And I switched it to look like this. And you can't tell a difference. No one's gonna know that that's a different pool because it's happening so fast. So we start with a shot of the shorts. It's a slow scale out, pretty quick. The shot of the ball, okay? We had to do this a few different times and there's varying frame rates throughout this spot. Mainly, 
24 and 120 frames per second. The reason why I like going from 24 to 120 is because it's really drastic. It's like these two opposite ends of the spectrum. And especially with sports, I shoot a ton of sports, so some of you might know. I shoot a lot of stuff for the Lakers. I think that that varying perspective makes it look so much more dramatic. And I think it's even like funny, in my opinion, for this specific spot. So we we threw the ball in probably like five or six times. The sun here is behind the ball. So it's, it's like right, right. If this was the ball, sun's over here, backlighting the ball. And then we have a bounce board that Bridger's holding that's catching that Nike logo. And it's just dropping bloop, perfectly in 120. Then the second shot is actually a digital zoom and Bridger and I had talked about how we were going to execute this. Unfortunately, we tried like 10 times to get the Nike swoosh to actually be dead center, like in the pool. It bothered me a lot that I couldn't get this to work, but we didn't have enough time. And so if you notice on this digital zoom, the ball zooms out and the Nike logo is not facing up. I hated that. I wish we could have done it, but it was taking like a ton of different tries. I even tried maybe potentially putting someone in the pool, holding the ball, but you could see them through the reflection. So I tried, we couldn't make it work. And that's something that you have to do as a DP or as a director is you got to know if something's not going to work and say, all right, let's move on. We don't need to spend a ton of time doing this because we don't have enough time in the day to actually make this happen. If we get this shot 35 different times. So boom, digital zoom. The way I achieved this is I put an adjustment layer on here to really sell the effect and I added a directional blur preset that I created. Um, it's, it's super easy. All you do is you drag on directional blur from the effects control panel. It keyframes from zero, goes to like 21 and then goes back to zero. This shot right here of them all jumping in the pool, we had to do this like three or four different times. The reason being was it wasn't as intense and we had to make sure that Jonathan got to the ball first. Sometimes like one of our other guys, we get to the ball and I'm like, Ian, you can't get to the ball first. You have to let Jonathan get to the ball. So we go here, they all jump in. Then we cut to another side shot of Jonathan actually physically grabbing the ball because he's going to lob it up to our main talent. So this was like planned out. I tell everyone, I'm like, hey, don't go get the ball. Go a little bit slower. Um, Kyle's also directing them and saying, Aaron, you go faster. Jonathan, go a little faster. Boom, dive in. And that way it kind of looks synchronized when they pop in there. So Jonathan gets the ball, cuts to another shot of him throwing it up. These are two obviously separate shots from different angles in the pool. Gives you a little bit of a different perspective, a little bit of different coverage. We cover this from multiple different angles. When I say the word coverage, I mean getting the same thing happening from multiple different shots, multiple different angles, right? So he's throwing it up one time over here. He's throwing it up one time when I'm on top of him. And that way, when I get back and post, I can figure out, eh, do I like this or do I like this? And it makes it a lot easier because I have this from the side. I have it from overhead. I have it from really low down to the ground. He throws the ball up. Aaron is flying through the air. And the way we're able to achieve this, this is another shot that's shot in 120. So Aaron's flying through the air. Oh, she's on slow-mo. I had her do it like three or four times because one time she's kind of grabbed it and like dunked it off her chest. Another time it was straight over. And I was like, I need you to haymaker windmill come through. Boom. And watch this. Boom. You can also hear, I'll talk about this more in the sounds, but the sound is super important once we get actually into the edit itself. Boom. Swish. Boom. Packs the ball out of bounds. The funniest part about this shot, it looks like it's a 10 foot hedge. And when I tell people it's a literal two foot hedge, they're like, wait, there's no way. This is actually like a miniature set. The way we get the glow on the hedge is from like a four by four bounce board. So we stick it right here, Bridger's holding it, and we are literally throwing the ball. Oh no, actually, I lied. We had a C stand holding it. Bridger is the one that's throwing the ball over the hedge. Kyle's on the other side of the hedge catching the ball. This shot has a horizontal flip on it. So the hedge is actually on this other side. And the way that the ball was moving, okay, it leaves Ian's hand, left side of frame. That means it's gotta come out from the right side over to the left. If you did it flip flopped, it wouldn't make sense from continuity standpoint. So we actually just did a horizontal flip and post uh, to make it look seamless. Boom, you hear the little birdie sounds. That's all in post. Team looks at each other like, what the heck? Now we can't play anymore. Boom, Nike swim. Oh, this is pretty cool. 
So for this specific shot, this one was one of the ones that was at my mom's pool that wasn't at the main set. You can see this was shot with a C70 and all I did was submerge a $20 fish tank underwater and it's able to capture these insane shots. It's actually unbelievable. I also bought a waterproof housing that I ended up returning on Amazon. It worked, it did its job, but it didn't fit the ZVE-1 perfectly. So yeah, it was like 80 bucks. So if that's something that you're looking to do, try it with a fish tank first because it's the best $20 investment you'll make if you're trying to do stuff underwater. And a really important thing is you will get reflections in the glass of the fish tank. So you have to have this. You have to have a circular polarizer and this is actually unbelievable. But when you're dealing with pools, when you're dealing with reflections, these things just make reflections go bye-bye. So this is a great investment. The one that I use is from Polar Pro. 10 out of 10, recommend it. Now let's hop into the edit. Now this is where the magic actually happens because when you sit down with so much footage, it can be really overwhelming. And I want you to think and remember that you have this deck that you've already pre-built. So I'm looking at the deck and I'm saying, okay, how should the story start? The ball drops into the water. We did the digital zoom actually on the spot. Like me and Bridger were talking and I'm like, that would be pretty cool. And he's like, let's see if we can pull that off. And so we were shooting it for posts and that's really important. And I remember this year when I was watching the movie Dune 2 and the director and the VFX team, they're talking, they're saying this worked so well because you have shots that are allowing for the VFX to happen. And I'm not saying this is VFX or anything even close to Dune, but you have to think about the post-production while you're shooting because it makes everybody's lives so much easier. So in Dune, when they have these shots framed up perfectly, it allows for the VFX people to do their thing and actually go ham. And in this sense, right, Bridger and I were chatting and we're like, oh, we want the ball to drop like this so then we can pop out and it'll make it look really cool and you have to frame the ball up so it's dead center so we can actually sell this effect. That's all happening prior to so we can actually execute it on the big day. One of the worst things you can do is get out there, you try a bunch of random effects in post but none of it's planned for. It makes it so much harder to actually pull off. In the first v version of the edit, we started with the ball and in the second version that they approved on, we started with these shorts. So boom, I put a whistle from a referee to like start the game, okay? You hear these sounds all throughout this video. There's water, there's dunks, there's basketball effects. Every sound in this video is from two places. We got Artlist IO, number one. Also, if you use Artlist down below in the description, you get two months for free. I had a subscription before they even started sponsoring the pod. Best music and sound effects. The song here, also from Artlist. And what's sick, this is not an ad by the way, but what's sick is I can use this song and they can use, Nike Swim can go use it, run ads with it. I'm covered under all that stuff. You can't just pull a song off the internet and go use it for a big global brand. It doesn't work like that. You have to pay for the songs. They cost lots of money. So I and highly, highly recommend investing in a good licensing program. Number two is the B-Figgy Essential Sound Effect Pack. Now it's specifically for sports at the moment. I'm working on another one, but all these sounds, these whooshes, these hits, these risers that you're hearing, that's all from my sound effect pack. And it's a great pack for what you get. You get like 160 sounds and like, I'm using a dribble, I'm using a dunk, I'm using all that stuff in here throughout. I'll point it out to you. So we got some sound down here. And one thing to note about sound design, I'm not the best sound designer in the world. I think I know my way around it a thing or two, but I think what's really important is the atmospheric sounds. And I got these from our list. So you hear like the, uh, the waterfall in the background, you hear people playing in a pool and I've toned it out so you don't hear people screaming and stuff. It's just like the water splashing back and forth. Also on set, what I'll do is I'll bring what's called a handy recorder and I will literally capture audio of them playing in the pool. Uh, and I was like, hey, everyone be quiet for a sec. I ought to get some textures of this water sound and people splashing, people you know, playing hard defense and all of that stuff ends up making this thing happen. So those are what's layered throughout so there's no dead space. A really noticeable thing when I critique people's edits, right, is I see they'll have sound design for like two seconds and then it cuts. And then they have sound design again, and then it cuts. And it's very noticeable that there's dead space. So figure out what in your edit could be atmospheric. Maybe it's birds chirping. Maybe it's people playing in the water. Maybe it's a car driving by. Maybe it's just the empty room tone noise. Whatever it's going to be, you have to think of those things and capture it. And that'll make your edit so much better. So then we cut, boom, digital zoom, back out, nice. Jonathan going in, grabbing the ball. There's a sound effect right here when he actually gets it and throws it up. You can hear a whoosh happening. 
this sound. That's actually me in a gym that's in the sound effect pack and I'm just going and I sped it up just a little bit and because I, I thought like, you know, you're going out for a dunk, kind of that sound, sound pretty good. I also got the reaction of my girl here, Leah. She's like looking up like, oh my God, someone's going to kill me. The girl dunks. I wish I could have had Leah under the basket, but she might have died if we did that. So we kind of had it like Aaron was literally jumping over her. Super dramatic. We thought it was pretty funny. Boom. Got the ball going in. Leah shooting a jumper. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Oh, my bad. My bad. Leah passing the ball to Jonathan. Jonathan gets the ball. Shoots a little three. This is the only shot that didn't make sense, right? Where is it at? Wish I found a way to tie this in better because it feels kind of random. Um, I think it still works, but now that I'm watching it back, uh, like the, for the thousandth time, I wish I would have had someone passing it to Jonathan to kind of sell this movement because it's like, wait, the ball's in the water. What just happened? But it is a cool shot. Like it looks sick in 120. Got uh, Jonathan shooting up a ball. So Jonathan goes up, shoots up a three. And Ian just packs it. Sound effect. Okay. I'm also cool with that specific sound peaking because I wanted it to be intense. Um, so I, I had actually layered it, it looks like two different times right here. Boom. Gets it out of there. We also have a hit down below. Boom. The riser is what you're hearing here. I'm going to solo it for you. That sound, that is what is like ending the song. And you either could use a riser, you could use a hit, you could use a bunch of different things. I, I usually tend to use risers. That's riser seven specifically. If you're wondering, I use it in a lot of my videos. You'll hear it all the time now. Um, so, whew. oh, let me take off the solo. You hear little birdies. Got a little birdies on art list. Pew, 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 pew. Pew. The ball also bounces. These are things that you have to think about because that sound effect, it wasn't there beforehand, right? Kyle's just catching the ball on the other side of the head. You don't actually hear that happening. Boom, goes the logo. Boom, on the big hit, then we get the song coming. Oh, I'm sorry. On the big hit, boom. So they wanted to cut the logo, boom. And then I literally had Sharif get in the water at my mom's house and drag these shorts underwater. And I also shot that in 120 with the, with the fish tank. One more note on the fish tank. If you guys ever buy one, you should buy these drops on Amazon that make it so the water doesn't beat up on the fish tank. Cause you'll go shoot with it and you'll get like one clean shot and then the water beads up and you can do another thing. You could literally spit on it. It's kind of gross. Or you could just buy these drops and you just rub the drops in all over the front of the glass. And then the water just glides off it. Kind of a cool hack. That was our spot that we made for Nike Swim. This was such a full circle moment too, because I went to the University of Oregon. I'm a duck, I love Nike. When I found out that we were gonna get to work with the biggest brand in the world, Nike, dude, are you kidding me? I was so excited to pull out every trick in the book that I had, and this was just a really fun social spot and it performed super well for them. So I hope you found the timeline breakdown helpful because this was what I really wanted to see when I was starting out. I wanted to see the sound effects. I wanted to see how long the shots were hanging on screen. And you can reverse engineer how to get good at making videos. I could not for the life of me film a video. I could edit decently well. And so I would watch these videos and try to slow them down. And so hopefully, this peels back the curtain and gives you an example of something for a high quality brand done at a high level with a really good team. And you can kind of see how every single person has a piece in this. It's not just me. It's not just the producer. It's not just the director. We all come together and we're able to make something like this. If you found this helpful, you should check out the full length podcast because we nerd out on this stuff for hours on end and there's tons of episodes. So if you can, please hit the subscribe button, leave us a comment and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.